when they talk about their own dogs they will talk about emotions they'll talk about joy they'll talk about anger guilt these are all emotions they will talk about and they feel very strongly that the their dog is experiencing all of it but at the same time we'll kind of switch to a cartesian idea of you know this is an automaton when it comes to training i can train the dog to be exactly the way i want the dog to be so i want to discuss behaviorism so behaviorism is um kind of the philosophy um behind uh, most training right positive and negative uh, rain reinforcement training and it's a it's an idea based on kind of the principle that most behavior that we see can be shaped with positive or negative reinforcement and that's kind of behind most kinds of training so this book is an excellent book by sanders um it's uh, called understanding dogs and it is a very interesting uh, chapter on behaviorism he says while behaviorists drew much of their understanding from experimental manipulation of animals the perspective they developed of both human and non-human animals posited that mental activity was not observable uh, and was therefore an unnecessary component of accounting for behavior basically what they're saying is uh you know thought emotion and those kind of mental activity it uh, there's no way to confirm or deny that it exists especially for non verbal um beings and so there's no point in spending time looking at it let's instead look at behavior which is observable and work from there um in their attempt to legitimize psychology as hard science behaviorists reverted to a cartesian um anti mentalism so a uh, cartesian uh, uh, philosophy or cartesian idea comes from rene descartes where he talks about uh, he sort of separates uh, human beings and uh, uh, animals and machines so human beings in one uh, category and animals is what he calls automatons uh, meaning you know uh, they uh, act like a machine in a deterministic way deterministic as in um It's like in a calculator right you type 2 plus 2 and you're going to get 4 it's a very uh, known outcome and that's what we're going to get either that or um or that it's going to be completely random so an example of that that they don't have free will and choice they don't think through things so an example i actually i was watching a lecture by chomsky who c- kind of criticizes uh, these ideas and uh, he gives a bit of a uncomfortable example but i think that's a, it's a nice example that's kind of stuck with me and i'll use the same one um he says if uh, he he's talking in a uh, an audience and he says now if somebody comes here and has points a gun at all of you guys and says uh, you either say hail hitler or i'm going to shoot you uh, now the probability is that most of us are going to say this um that's the logical thing to do but the the thing about human beings the thing about free choice and agency is that there may be for all you know uh, a few people who say no or one person who says no mm. so it's non deterministic it's you can tell with a high level of probability that they're likely to do this but it is not mandatory and that's human beings we have free choice we can go our own route it may not make sense to everybody but we're going to go our own route we're likely to or not likely to we can we could um and this idea of um this cartesian notion was taken so far that they were even doing um dissections on dogs uh while they were conscious alive conscious dogs and the screaming of the dog I, and i'm sorry this is going to be disturbing but the screaming of the dog was explained off as a mechanical response you know uh, uh like an alarm yeah like a, like a broken machine that might be screaming a, a broken alarm kind of a thing mm. it's a it's a mechanical response um and that there is no feeling that there are no emotions and let's not forget that these cartesian ideas are ideas that came from rene descartes it's not um it's not a fact it's not a provable fact it's it's an idea it's a philosophy that came from there um based on this whole concept of human exceptionalism we are different animals are completely you know different and he there were people who questioned and even kind of criticized his point of view so uh, the most there were people before him and even his contemporaries voltaire and hume are uh, some of the loudest voices um but i think the cartesian idea kind of stuck because 
um, humans have had a history of exploiting animals and this is a very very convenient point of view to embrace uh, because if you're going to say hey they don't have emotions then we don't have to feel guilty about putting them through terrible things right we don't have to feel guilty about exploiting them we don't have to think about their um, uh, their kind of welfare uh, in in the different ways in which we uh, use animals and so that is stuck and it's funny that it is stuck even though this idea has changed a lot there has been a lot of evidence that are talking about existence of emotions in animals lots of um, new um, cognitive pathologists take a very strong view on this and so though and it's very really interesting to see that you know there are a lot of professionals who will um when they talk about their own dogs, they will talk about emotions, they'll talk about joy, they'll talk about anger, guilt, these are all emotions. They will talk about and they feel very strongly that the, their dog is experiencing all of it, but at the same time will kind of switch to a Cartesian idea of, you know, this is an automaton when it comes to training. I can train the dog to be exactly the way I want the dog to be, you know, give a very specific um, uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you give an input, mm -hmm. you give the right cue, you've done the right training, it's like, a, you know, uh, it's like uh, uh, AI and uh, machine learning, right? AI and machine learning uh, programming and that's what it reminds me of. You know, you train the um, the machine enough, you will get the, uh, the output that you want. We almost look at it that way. We are looking at them as automatons when we're trying to train them into this perfect behavior, not taking into account that it's not input-output kind of a thing. There is a cognitive process in there. There is a brain. So... Uh, so let me go back to reading this thing you know he talks about cartesian anti-mentalism right which is discounting that there is a brain behavior scientists uh behavior sorry behaviorists interested in the activities of non-human animals saw no need to conceive of cognition as intervening between stimulus and response so there is no thought process if i get a stimulus there has to be a response there is no thinking it through so you remember the example i just gave of um, chomsky discussing the whole you know so human beings there's a thought process in there it's not like hey you say this and i'm going to give you this response there is a thought process and one person's brain might say no don't do that right so they might take a different route so there is a thought there and behaviorists uh, claim that uh, or rather don't see the reason to consider it behavior was either instinctive or the consequence of conditioned response. So you see a lot of trainers who will insist that if you want anything, you just it's you could just condition it. And if you're seeing anything that is conditioned one way or the other. So they will argue with you that this is not the animal actually giving you this thing that somehow, somewhere in the way we have reacted to the animal, we have conditioned this behavior. It's not that it is coming through their cognitive process. Uh, so that's something that is almost discounted as that they're incapable of it. And attention to mental processes merely deflected attention away from manipulation of the objective variables um, of which behavior was a function. This mechanomorphic perspective, mechanomorphic, mechano machine, this idea, and morphic, you know, form, yeah, taking the form of it. Uh, came to be accepted as the common sense of science. Uh, and this was called behavioristic operationalism. So I do see a lot of people saying operationalize this, which is, you know, put this into this kind of a format. Uh, this approach is reductionist, individualist, emphasizes quantification and in a sense transforms the object of investigation into an automaton. Back to the Cartesian idea behaviorism as a perspective and behavioristic operationalism as a methodological orientation came to dominate ethological investigation of animal behavior in natural settings. When ethologists employed such terms as think and feel, they were either condemned by the scientists' um, colleagues as being sentimental or they themselves were very careful um, uh, to tack on disclaimers. Now ethology is kind of moving away from it. We have cognitive ethologists like uh, Mark Beckoff and uh, Sapolsky uh, and largely in the area of primatologies where we are seeing this big change coming in but we are also seeing it in many other places where they are beginning to um, question this idea that are they really that kind of uh, non-thinking? The fact that they don't have language, does that mean that they don't have thought and emotion? 
then does that mean that babies don't have thought and emotion they don't have language in fact that was actually something that was believed for a while uh, that babies don't feel pain because they don't express it and so there were surgeries being done on babies without anesthesia because it was believed that they didn't feel the pain because it was not verbalized so now there is a whole wave of people coming in um, analysts coming in who are questioning this idea that just because they don't express it the way we understand it does that really mean that you don't feel it does that mean that they don't have language does that mean they don't communicate because they're not using english or whatever dominant language <clears throat> there are people questioning does that mean that they don't have uh, do animals not have uh, you know a concept of society sentience conscience culture and all of this we're beginning to see that they do have some version of it maybe different from what we do maybe different from what we understand they may not think the way we do they may not articulate the way we do but they do think they do articulate they do express with intent which is to say when i say with intent consciousness which is i am communicating with the intent of modifying your behavior if you see chiro communicate for example we spoke about this in the other video too when you see dogs communicate and the video of chiro and blackie chiro's communication is with intent of eliciting friendship from blackie so uh, chiru wants to change the behavior of the other animal and therefore using a certain set of communication so it is with intent it's with con- you know consciousness it's not just hey i feel this and this comes out this way hmm. you know it's not a machine it's not programmed to be this way what's also interesting in that communication that we see is there is a trial and error she's paying attention this is called theory of mind i am paying attention to how this is landing on you hmm. and based on what i see i am changing what i want to say to you i'm going to try another approach go from another angle and all of this constitutes to self consciousness something that has for a long time been believed is a human dominion but now we have a lot of people coming in uh, in these various different fields that are showing that uh, maybe we've been a little bit arrogant about it it's not a new thought it started back with darwin maybe even earlier and if we look at eastern philosophers we'll probably see a lot of it is not documented but we we'll probably see instances of it so it's not a new thought but in the field of human animal studies critical animal studies and anthropology and fields like that and cognitive ethology we are beginning to see louder and louder voices um mark beckoff's book is excellent uh, the emotional lives of animals uh, and we are uh, the idea is being embraced uh, quite globally now so yay for that and uh, yeah that's i think uh, where box is um, kind of that's where our interest is to really look at the cognitive process of animals it's exciting